So fast forward a little while, and I have the uh, CV switched around on the lift. Uh, I've got it kind of precariously placed so that I can raise that front end up. And we're going to go ahead and take this front end off and replace it with this. This is a front end off of a, let's see if I can get that bearing, a uh, Superhawk. So I have a bearing kit that should work with the original races that are in there. If they're in good shape, I might leave them, uh, depending on how hard they are to get out. If they're junked, then they're coming out. So we'll see how they are, but hopefully the bearing kit works. It should, all well, the research says it works, but sometimes that's not how it ends up working in the end. So we're gonna go ahead, disassemble the front end, take it off, and then disassemble this front end, change out the bearings and put it on. So with switching out the front end, we're gonna have to reposition this fuse box eventually. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put it. I know that there's gonna be some rewiring that's gonna have to get done. But we'll go ahead and remove these so we can get to the main bolt there. All right, and it looks like it is a six millimeter Allen. Remove these front headlights as well. Obviously not the stock headlight that's on here. I went with this uh, kind of rally cross style. I just like the looks of it. And I might keep it or I might not. It's like a little kind of scrambler style. And I'm not sure if it's still something I want if I want to go back to an original. this and I'm just going to unplug that right there. So there's our fuse box that we're going to have to replace. Very simple, just four fuses. Okay, not sure what size that is. Well, I was able to find a 30 millimeter socket that fits in there. But I cannot find my breaker bar. So I'm using a torque wrench, which I do not advise. But in a pinch, it can work. I'll leave that on there. Just touch and disconnect a couple of things up here. The tachometer. Down. And let's see if any of that electrical is going to get stuck up in here. Okay. All the controls there, disconnected. Dash control should be okay. We got to do the throttle cables. See if we can break this loose so it spins. There we go. Let's see what we got here. More 
six mils. Put these through here. Missed a couple of connections. All right, so on the front end here, I have all my wiring coming down right there. And I'm just trying to, to get it to come out, but this splits the brakes for the dual discs on the front, and it's just not enough room. It's pinched in there pretty good. So I'm gonna pull this screw here, and if we can look up there, there's just a couple of bolts holding it on, on the mount. We're gonna remove those, give us a little bit more room for our wiring. quick. Put that cover off. Alright, easy enough. Remove the horns. And now, two to remove that. That will give us enough space to pull this wiring out. All right, there we go. Holy moly, that was a pain. Okay. All right, we just need to disconnect this clutch cable. All right, so I just went on the other side, other end of this cable, and loosened up that adjustment. There we go. Okay. Clutch cable's out of the way. All right, we just got this one last bolt here. Try up on these triple top of triple trees here. Okay, there's dash. There for now. There he is. There's a small fitting here that's getting in the way that I missed. That will do it. That'll do it every time. It's the first time I've taken this far down. Never really done this before, so. There's a learning curve to it that I'm gonna have to overcome. I do have another CB750. Uh, this one's an 81, my other one's an 80. There are a couple minor differences between them, even though they are the same model, CB750S. Uh, the other one I plan on returning to stock. Because these bikes, just the way they are, are pretty good, you know, pretty damn good bikes. the top triples you get a couple of these uh, nuts that use a spanner wrench to take apart and the top one is locked in with two tabs that I've just kind of bent down out of the way for now and then take that wrench this one's actually loose enough that I can take it right out and we have this Let's see if I can show you there. Little locking washer so that the other one doesn't come out. They lock into each other. So you're not loosening up when you're going down the road. And tight but not incredibly tight. Not block the camera too bad. Right, 
last couple turns here. removed. Wow, that is a piece of metal right there. Let's get that out of the way, take a look at the bearing races, and then we'll uh, get the new front end on. So the races don't look too bad. Don't feel, come on camera focus, there we go really don't feel anything as far as wear on them. No pitting, no sharp edges on them. Kind of dark in there, I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. Yeah, but they, uh, they actually feel really good. So let's see if the new bearings fit. So now we're gonna process down the Superhawk front end, just take the top triples off so that we can uh, size the bearings and then install it into the front spindle for the uh, CB. I do need to pick up a new set of clip-ons for this. Uh, it only has one. I don't know why, but not a big deal. That's a simple get. I just noticed that it is missing the two locking nuts, so we're going to have to order those in. Not too particularly worried about that. It should be fairly easy to, to get. And the original CB ones might fit, but uh, I don't think they will. This looks considerably larger. But simple enough, all done, ready to process, test the bearings fit on these, test the bearing fit on the, uh, the triple tree spindle on the CB. And, and uh, put it all together. So here is the new bearing. Uh, this is a little bit different. It's got the diameter for the inside for the uh, spindle coming off the Superhawk front end. But the outside will fit in the original race in the CB. So it just kind of converts it over. Um, I don't have a, a race removal tool. Uh, so I'm just going to clean these up. These bearings do need to be packed still, but just to prove a concept them, they fit perfectly. So that'll be nice. So we're gonna clean up the races, uh, re-grease everything, pack the bearings, and then install them onto, well, they'll install the lower one onto the Superhawks front end, and then put the top one in while we're uh, Finishing it up. Future me, interrupting this part of the video, I ended up switching out the races. Uh, for reasons that you'll see further into the video, uh, I wasn't 100% sure if they were going to be causing the issue that I run across or not. So, out of uh, just caution, I, I swapped them out. So, there's brand new races in there, the game with the race sets. Also, I realized I didn't say it when I was. Uh, I'm filming it. I'm still new at this. I'm still trying to figure it out. 
I've never been in front of a camera, so I'm gonna make mistakes. Uh, I'm using a bearing kit from All Balls. It was a set that they had to switch from the uh, the CB uh, steering or steering stem to Superhawk. Bought it right through there. Um, I've seen on the forums that some of them have been hard to get lately. I don't know if that's still the case. Everything seems to be a year old and COVID messed everything up. So I don't know if it's still that way, but the, the bearings that I got was through all balls. Uh, and it worked great. It just, well, you'll see. Get all that old grease out of there. The races really are in remarkably good shape. All right, we're gonna pack some grease into these bearings. Just kind of push it down until you get grease coming out the other side. I'm gonna make sure they're completely packed with grease. This is a very messy, messy job. Check the other side, make sure you got grease coming out. I'm gonna drop it right onto that spindle so I can get a little friction on it. Turn the bearings. This is the lower. Pretty well greased, actually. I got grease coming out both sides of my bearing. All the rollers are very well greased. It is an enormous mess, but looks good. Okay, we're gonna drop the dust seal on. Grab a set of gloves. Take this. Take our new bearing. And actually, I'm going to add just a little bit of grease to the shank here. Just to make it a little bit easier on fitment. All right. So that's going to go just like that. Is a very, very tight friction fit there. Okay, let's go test fit this up front and uh, just make sure that looks good and works as it should. So, I've got that set up and we're just gonna slowly bring this in. seat that bottom bearing. I do have the dust, uh, the dust cover in as well. And it's not too much force. I have everything all greased up, trying to make it as smooth and as easy as possible. Still going pretty easy. to the top of this real quick. So what we're doing is using this top washer right here to push the bearing into place on the spindle just by tightening up the top. Or the spacer, move that bearing a little bit further. It actually ran out of thread on that. Get a lot 
smaller spacers. So just gotta watch for these stops. As you can tell, it's starting to get caught up on. Tap that back over. Good. Just needs to come a little bit further. Alright, now I got it around the steering stops. You can still feel it moving. It's not tightening up yet. Alright, perfect. That's on the steering stop now, so don't have to worry about that. Nice and easy. Okay, that's tightening up on the nut again. Let's just break that. Add in that last washer. Feel seated. Appears to be seated all the way. Well, we've run into a bit of an issue, uh, which is not terribly unexpected on something like this, but still. The steering stem's not the same. Uh, I was led to believe that they were, but they are not. Uh, while they look the same here, that's when they're lined up at the bottom. My camera's all freaking out on. So that's how they are when they're, they're lined up at the bottom <clears throat> for the bottom race. And you can see that the Superhawk which is uh, this one here, is just about half an inch, three-eighths, half an inch short. Um, so I can remove the steering stem, press it out, press it in a new one. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, just uh, switch it out with the CBs. The CBs is welded in place. So now I need to find a steering stem that fits this. That's this length. And... Uh, that's the next thing on the docket. So back to the forms and see if I can't find something that'll work. If not, I'll have to get one made, which uh, I don't really want to do, but if you got to do it, you got to do it. All right. So I have that all mocked into place. It's not mounted properly. Um, the steering stem's too short. I just wanted to get a feel for how everything was going to look and sit, which it's quite nice. It's lowered the front end of the bike, which I like. It's going to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit more attractive. I think it's going to be easier to level out the frame when I build the gantry in the back for the shock. But the issue right now 
on the front end is the steering stem for the Superhawks front end is too short. So if I take these off, you can see that the locking nuts, the threads that they engage with is still uh, technically inside of the tube. So I need to press out this steering stem <clears throat> and then replace it with a new one. I'm talking to the guys over at uh, Cognito Moto or something, Moto Cognito, Cognito Moto, something like that. Um, they do CB to CBR conversions, uh, um, steering stems for that. So I'm hoping that one of them will fit onto this. So I've got to take this all apart and press out the steering stem that's in there, get the measurements, and uh, hopefully they have one that fits. If not, uh, maybe they can build one. I'm not too sure. Another issue that I've run into is with the steering stops. The steering stops here don't work with the Superhawk front end, so they're going to have to get modified. This one's got to come all the way off to fit the top triple, but that's all pretty small potatoes. I'm not too concerned about any of that. Modify it up with something that works, so should be pretty easy. But it's on there. It looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, on to the next thing.